Hello everybody, in this video I'm talking about the comedy adventure fantasy light novel volume number one of Welcome to the Outcasts Restaurant. This one by Yuki Kimikawa with artwork by Gao. If you want to pick up your own copy of this one, I'll have links in the description down below. Now just to clear up a little bit of confusion right from the get-go, if you sort of look at the cover of this or you look it up online, you may very well see it titled as Welcome to the Diner of the Exiled. This was the title it was originally released as, it was the title that it was originally announced as, and then for whatever reason, the Japanese publisher, who of course controls a lot of the what things are titled, what people are named, what the thing is named, basically came back to Tentai Books and said, eh, we've kind of decided we're not thrilled with that title and hence the title change to Welcome to the Outcasts Restaurant. Now this title does have some triggering themes in it. I don't usually talk a lot about triggering themes because, well, I hate to say it, but at this point it's kind of a given that light novels are probably going to have at least one or two, but this one packs a lot. Um, there is an attempted rape. There is... I like slavery. I mean, I was going to attempt to call it human trafficking, but it's not really exactly that. But I mean, it's slavery. Uh, there is uh, suicide. Um, there, there is like, you know, characters being abandoned, left to die. A, like there's a couple of pretty darker themes to this book that I'm letting you know about just because when you first read the description of it, and even when I'm talking about it in this video, you probably wouldn't go into it thinking that's what you're going to get. Welcome to the Outcast Restaurant is about Dennis, who has risen to level 99. Human beings can only rise to level 100, and just so we know right off the bat, yes, this whole leveling thing, it's a very typical RPG mechanic we see in a lot of light novels. However, unlike a lot of other light novels, levels in this book are pretty much just based on how many skills you have, how strong you are, things that are observable and measurable by other people. It's not sort of like you have a magic window that you can see out of the corner of your eye that tells you you're now this level or that level. In any case, Dennis is the chef of one of the most powerful guilds in the kingdom. And as the book opens up, the guild has failed a recent mission and they've decided to make Dennis the scapegoat and exile him from the guild in form of punishment. Well, Dennis decides, you know what? Psh, I'm out. I don't care. I don't even feel like fighting this. I'm just going to take the money I've saved up and open my own little restaurant out in the sticks. So, as he does so, his restaurant starts attracting a variety of individuals, and a number of these people are kind of like Dennis. They kind of don't quite fit in, they're trying to find their place in the world, and unfortunately, a lot of them get into a lot of trouble doing it, and it's up to Dennis to come to their rescue. And as he does, they become regulars in the restaurant, giving it that kind of found family. As the book proceeds, obviously with Dennis interfering in a lot of different things, he manages to tick off a good number of people and they start to conspire against him, leading to the rest of the book. Now, as I mentioned in the description, this book has that core sense of found family. These outcasts, these misfits, these exiles, finding a common place that they can sit and eat and enjoy each other's company and find friendship and mentorship. And that is one thing that I will give this credit for is that even though there's a number of female characters and even though of course you'll open up the light novel and immediately there's a bath scene and drawing in it, the book really is not a harem title. Dennis feels very much like a big brother mentor figure, which I'll give it marks for because I just think it would have been skeevy any other way. Also, as I mentioned when I was talking about just how many sort of triggers this book has, it probably tipped you off to the fact that this book covers a lot of ground with not a lot of pages. <laughs> A uh, lot of different characters. I think there's, what, like four or five characters aside from Dennis himself that are sort of main figures. We've got a bunch 
of secondary side characters. This is a book that I feel suffers from web novel-itis. I don't even know if it was a web novel before, but it definitely feels that way. That very much sort of writing a book in bits and pieces as you go along, but because you're writing it in sort of as smaller vignettes or shorter stories, you really aren't getting any sense of character growth. You aren't getting uh, a sense of, well, I mean, you just don't spend enough time on these various components. A character that goes through an attempted rape and is rescued pretty much never talks about it three or four pages after the fact and doesn't really seem that traumatized by it. And this is sort of a common thing as we go through the book, that these horrible things happen, it gets solved, they get rescued, that they're prevented, whatever, and they just move on. And that feels very much to me like that sort of web novel thing, right? Tell your contained story, move on. Tell your contained story, move on. It isn't until we've had all of these sort of characters with their contained stories that we start getting some stories that feel like there's some kind of connectivity to the book and some kind of build from the book. But the problem at that point is, is that because we have so many characters and because those characters really have not been given time or pages to develop, it all feels just a little superficial and thin. And I could extend that same idea to pretty much all aspects of the book, whether it be the character building, whether it be the world building, whether it even be like this level system that they have. Everything is serviceable, but nothing is really all that fleshed out. Nothing really feels engaging. This is one of those books that you can very easily sit down and just kind of read through and be disengaged for most of the time you're not going to feel heavily invested because the characters aren't given enough depth for you to become heavily invested. Most of the characters are very archetypal. Uh, even the fact that the, the main girl that's on the cover, Atriel, is hardly speaks at all and does most of her emoting either with her expression of her eyes or by flashing peace signs, which feels incredibly cliche. Um, and so again, this is what I'm saying is that there is not a lot of really deep stuff. This is not a book that goes into as much detail as it really should. And even that aspect of the found family that I really like, I would say this book doesn't explore that enough or give enough, uh, meaning to that because... Well, to, to talk too much about it would be kind of spoilerish, but let's just say that everybody who's involved doesn't really know that that's what they have as the book goes along. Like they can tell that there's something special. They can tell that, you know, this restaurant means something and that, you know, it's a place where they can feel at least safe and welcome, but it never quite gets to that point uh, that we see in a lot of other light novels where it's like, yeah, we're family and we're here for each other or, you know, no guilds will have us, but hey, we could be a pretty kick-ass guild together. It never quite gets there. And that's kind of too bad to me because I think this book would have really benefited a lot from that. Honestly, I kind of think this book would have been benefited if they had cut it in half and extended it to be two volumes and just give us way more character development make these quite honestly like horrible situations that characters find themselves in have much more impact much more lasting impact that i would really like to see and focus so much more on that family aspect on that warmth and meaning aspect because even Dennis, who probably gets the most character development in the book, I never felt like his development was as great to justify where it ends up. I, again, I'm being very cryptic because I don't want to spoil it, but uh, it, let's just say that his journey just did not feel that it had the depth that it should or could. So overall, welcome to the Outcast restaurant. Well, it's kind of like a okay-ish book. If you walk into it knowing that 
it's got some pretty dark stuff but it's going to glaze over it really quick if you know that you're not going to become super invested in the characters because well a there's a lot of them and b the book just doesn't give them enough time or room to become interesting if you're just looking for something that is just a kind of by the numbers comedy adventure light novel it's not horrible i wouldn't say it's probably one of the best picks but you know i'm i am kind of curious to see what they do with volume two and three uh to see if we just get even more new characters or if they actually do at those points start to give these characters more depth and everything else the book itself feels very much like a one and done there is this little thread that they throw in towards the end that kind of gives it an idea of that it can go somewhere else but i'll be honest it, it really does feel like when you get to the end it doesn't feel like the author was planning a whole lot beyond the book which could also explain maybe some of the lack of character building as well so those are my thoughts on welcome to the outcast restaurant my next read is going to be one that uh, the anime has just debuted for this one and uh honestly it's a title that i've been very enthusiastically looking forward to and i've already started reading it a bit and um it's really not what i expected but it's not bad <laughs> and that is going to be the detective is already dead and that'll be my next review in the meantime thank you for watching this video thank you so much to my youtube members you'll have seen their names scrolling along the screen as i'm sitting here flapping my gab and uh if you want to be a member you can hit that join button beneath this video don't forget to give things a like subscribe all that kind of stuff that lets know youtube know that you like this content in the meantime thanks for watching this video i'll see you in the next one till then bye bye for now